Good morning, folks. Heck of an evening last night in terms of space weather. We've been eyeing the sunspot group incoming just south of the solar equator, and we were also expecting an impact from the departing coronal hole. Both gave us reasons to pay attention last night, and we have an excellent storm-induced explosion candidate. Let's first begin back in 2003. This image here shows the before and after at one of the many power stations taken down by the 2003 Halloween solar storms in Sweden and Norway. High voltage transformers and distributors, beware of the sun. So let's come now to spaceweathernews.com and begin peeking in on the last day on our star. The major activity on the sun side was indeed at the sunspot group incoming. On the right side departing, you also see the corona hole that set its stream our way a few days ago. The easiest way to break down what happened last night is via the alerts you got through the Disaster Prediction app. Here are the three vital notifications that came through in the span of about two hours. Time stamps are Mountain Time here in New Mexico, a shockwave in the solar wind, a geomagnetic storm, and a solar flare. Let's begin with the shockwave. I've got both ACE and DISCOVER here. Solar wind wasn't due to arrive until midday today, but it had some more gusto than expected. And it is key to remember that the main induced storm effects are from the geomagnetic storms. But upon the shockwave impact and compression of Earth's magnetic field, relativistic electrons from the magnetosphere and the Van Allen belts are forced down through the atmosphere. This is what scientists said could juice lightning, ionize the atmosphere, and it's very much the way cosmic rays work as well. There was significant compression of the field upon impact. It was only slightly fast and hot as a stream, but the density of the wave was pretty impressive with more than a 4x intensification immediately that built to about 5x. At the most surge worry time of day and time of year in California, the high voltage equipment did exactly what one fears in a solar impact scenario. The effects were so on point with what we've expected, and folks, the explosion occurred just 25 minutes after the shockwave alert went out through the app. More than 100,000 people lost power as firefighters battled to put out the blaze, and indeed, folks, we had a low-level geomagnetic storm condition on the global scale crop up afterwards, apparently much more tame over the whole Earth, although the ground magnetic perturbations induced from that storm, remember those come after the compression effects, are indeed beginning to pop up across the globe just this morning. The stream that impacted came from that departing coronal hole top right. Now, let's get to the solar flare because it represents something more and more rare as we enter solar minimum. We've peaked at M-class already with numerous other C-class events continuing into this morning. And to see even more would not be surprising. We did have the radio blackout from the event, but they have basically just been affecting the eastern part of the world. But we will indeed keep an eye on Big Papa here since there appears to be a measure of magnetic complexity building near the penumbra of the lead positive group. Just one article to bring up today on Earth's magnetic field. Most of you know the field is weakening as the magnetic poles have begun to wander. This article simply describes how some of the micro scale changes come with corresponding effects in other parts of the globe. Our field is simple, connected, and when one part begins to shift, it sets off reactions for the whole. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. App notification alerts on. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.